I'm usually rather scathing about climate bloggers, but someone sent me some links to a number of blogs that convinced me they'd got at least one thing right. There was much ballyhoo in the media a few years ago when two huge chunks of the Peterman Glacier in Greenland broke away, and it led to concerns from scientists about an increase in the rate of melting of Greenland's ice cap. And yet, as the bloggers rightly point out, the glacier hasn't retreated, it's been advancing. Why can't scientists who study the glacier see that too? We should all be very concerned about the fact that our so-called free press and scientists in academia are aligned to us in such a bold and obvious fashion. Well, that's a bit strong. The corruption in climate academia is obviously very deep. Hang on. Before I start climbing on board with a conspiracy theory, I need to do a bit more than just spend five minutes looking at blogs and photos. The first thing that puzzled me was... Since no one disputes the fact that two huge chunks of ice came away from the Peterman Glacier, why didn't that make a dent in its position? Why did it move forwards rather than backwards? So I looked more carefully at the timeline and found more information, and then I checked my watch. It had taken only another five minutes to discover that all these very convincing blogs and videos are talking complete nonsense. They all show photos of the ice advancing after 2012, which is true. But how come they never show photos of what happened before 2012? And this is what it looks like. These red lines mark the outlines of blocks of ice that broke away in 2010 and 2012. So let's take a closer look at what the blogs aren't showing you. The Peterman Glacier is in the far north of Greenland, and one of the reasons it's being studied is that it's been pretty stable for over 130 years, since it was first measured in 1876 until the massive breakup of 2010. As the ice front advances at the rate of about a kilometre a year, small icebergs are breaking off into the sea, or calving, keeping the ice front pretty much in equilibrium. This is what the ice front looked like in 1999, and 2004, and again in 2010. But around 2008, researchers noticed cracks beginning to appear, and in 2010 something unusual happened. A huge area of ice four times the size of Manhattan broke away. It was a record. And sure enough, the rupture did cause the ice front to retreat. Then more cracks appeared further upstream, and in 2012 the same thing happened again. This time a double Manhattan-sized chunk of ice separated, and again the ice front moved back. Researchers calculated that the breakups shortened the glacier in the fjord from 81 kilometres in length to 46 kilometres. The advance between 2012 and 2019 hasn't even made up for the ice lost in the 2012 breakup, let alone the 2010 breakup. Now more cracks are appearing 12 kilometres even further upstream, just like the cracks that heralded the 2010 and 2012 breakups. Researchers are expecting that another ice island may break away in the next few years. That would take the ice front back even further. The next thing I checked was why the scientists were claiming that the ice was not advancing after 2012, when it clearly was. Why are they claiming that the Petermann Glacier has shrunk since the Cabin event in 2012, when it's actually grown very rapidly? Good question. Is it really because they're paid to lie about the climate? No, again, it turns out the bloggers got that wrong too. Firstly, when bloggers make a claim about what someone said without providing a name or a quote, be sceptical. Experience has shown me that it usually means they've made it up. I can't find a single instance of a scientist making that claim, and neither can the bloggers. On the contrary, scientists have openly reported on the advance in the ice since 2012. NASA has posted images of it online. The advance is mentioned and illustrated in scientific studies. You can even look it up on Wikipedia. So if the bloggers think they've exposed a scurrilous secret that scientists are trying to hide, I'm sorry to say that everyone else was way ahead of you. And they certainly never claimed that the ice was retreating. Then I noticed something in Tony Heller's video that showed where this idea might have come from, and it's a great insight into how these conspiracy theories get started. I'll come back to that in a minute. First, it's important to look at why the Peterman Glacier is behaving like this. 
After all, you don't see seven years of advance like this in most of the world's glaciers. They're nearly all retreating. So here's a bit of background. Outside of tectonic movement, glaciers advance and retreat according to two main factors. One is the amount of snowfall they receive at the top, in what's called the accumulation zone. The other is the amount of ice that melts at the bottom, called the ablation zone. The terminus of the glacier is called its foot. When accumulation and ablation are in balance, the foot of the glacier neither advances or retreats. In recent decades, the amount of snow accumulating on glaciers has been outpaced by rapid melting, and the ablation zone has been moving higher up, again because of warmer air temperature. As a result, the feet of most glaciers have been in constant retreat, and certainly haven't been advancing since 2012. So why is the Peterman Glacier behaving differently? Answer, because none of the photos in any of the blogs actually show the foot of the Peterman Glacier. I know, I was as shocked as you are. Turns out I didn't know as much about glaciers as I thought. Greenland's glaciers aren't like the mountain glaciers we're familiar with and the ones I've studied. They're continental glaciers, an extension of the massive Greenland ice sheet. Basically, they're an outflow of the sheet itself. Unlike mountain glaciers, they're tapping into a huge reservoir of ice. And unlike mountain glaciers that end on land, the Peterman Glacier extends far into the sea. It continues in contact with bedrock for a short distance, but then it floats, and for most of its length it's an ice shelf known as the Peterman Tongue. So what we're seeing in all these photos is the edge of the ice shelf, not the foot of the glacier. This is important because the ice shelf isn't moving under its own weight due to gravity, like a mountain glacier. What's causing it to move is the force of the descending land ice behind it. And because the ice shelf is stuck between two rock faces on each side of a fjord, it resists this movement. Effectively, it acts like a break, holding back the outflow of the ice sheet behind it. Anyone who's lived in a cold climate will be familiar with the blockage that ice can cause inside a frozen pipe. It impedes the flow of water. You have to warm the pipe to get the ice to break up and break away. As chunks of ice come out, the blockage is cleared and the water flows faster. So this isn't a difficult concept to grasp, and scientists say that's the danger of what's happening on the Peterman ice shelf. If large chunks of this blockage continue to break away, the ice will flow more freely and quickly out of the ice sheet, and that will accelerate sea level rise. That's why scientists have been studying the velocity of the Peterman Glacier since the early 1990s, and that's a measure of how much ice is flowing. And there was indeed an increase in velocity of the glacier after the 2012 blockage was removed. We see the ice flowing more freely. In normal times, it takes one step forwards and one step backwards as icebergs carve into the sea. So the small advance we've seen over the last seven years is not unusual. What's different now is that it's taking one step forward and seven steps backwards. There have been large break-offs before, around 1960 and 1991, but what scientists are concerned about is the fact that the breaks are becoming larger and more frequent. Instead of being decades apart, the last two were just two years apart, and another rift may already be forming. And the 2010 breakup was much larger than anything that's been seen before. The omission of all this crucial detail in the blogs can't be because of ignorance, because even though the bloggers don't read scientific journals, even the newspapers they cite explain it. This is from the independent story that Anthony Watts cited on his blog, but didn't show. And Tony Heller shows the top of the Washington Post story, but cuts it off before the crucial paragraph that also explains it all, and he replaces it with this tip. You'd have to be a complete moron to believe anything the Washington Post writes about climate. I'm no fan of the way the media report science, as anyone familiar with my channel would know, but this reference to the Washington Post brings me back to the false claim I showed earlier. 
Where did Heller get the idea that scientists claimed the ice was retreating after 2012? Why are they claiming that the Petermann Glacier has shrunk since the Kevin event in 2012? As I said, that's simply not true. Scientists say clearly that the ice advanced after 2012, but I think I figured out how Heller managed to make completely the opposite conclusion. This is from his video. So based on the Washington Post article, it would be safe to assume that the ice edge has retreated since 2012. But is it safe to assume the Washington Post says that? Well, that's very easy to check. Just read the Washington Post story and find out. It turns out the Washington Post did not claim the ice had been retreating after 2012. In fact, it had a graphic that clearly showed the advance since 2012, and it even gives the speed of the advance about one kilometre a year. So the assumption that it said otherwise is nonsense and could very easily have been checked. Therefore, the assumption that a scientist told the Washington Post this, which then becomes a pluralized fact fed to subscribers, why are they claiming that the Petermann Glacier has shrunk since the Kevin event in 2012, is completely made up. Fortunately, the people who follow these blogs are all skeptics. So when I read the comments sections, I discovered that most of them had checked the newspaper stories for themselves and discovered that the assumptions were wrong and uncovered the complete picture that the bloggers didn't show. I'm kidding! Of course they didn't do that. They're not the least bit sceptical. They didn't bother checking any of this. Of course they blindly believe whatever the bloggers tell them. We're living in an internet world plagued by conspiracy theories. Why is it up to me to go do five minutes of research on the NASA website to find out what a big lie this whole story was? Well, maybe you shouldn't just spend five minutes looking at some photos and decide that you know more about this than the oceanographers and glaciologists who spend half the year on the ice shelf studying it. Maybe you should spend more than five minutes on this and read some of the material you're citing and find out what scientists actually said rather than jumping to the conclusion that they must be lying because you assume the only source you cite says something it doesn't. That goes for all the bloggers who misrepresented these facts. No one is forcing you to sit comfortably at home, look at a few photos, misrepresent the science and ask for donations. After all, it was only after I'd spent five minutes looking at the photos and agreed that the ice was advancing that I discovered what happened before 2012 and that scientists didn't lie and claim the ice was retreating after 2012. And after more hours studying the research material, I learned how the velocity of the glacier increased after the 2012 carving and why that happened and why it's important. And I learned that 80% of the melting is coming from warmer water underneath the glacier, and that recent measurements show the temperature of that water is increasing. I'm not going to pretend that a few days studying this makes me any kind of authority, but I do know a lot more than I did when I started out, reading the blogs and looking at a few photos. There's still a huge amount of information I can't squeeze into a 16-minute video. And there's still a lot the researchers don't know. That's why they're not saying that the ice breaks are a sure sign of global warming, contrary to what the bloggers claim. But they are saying that they're concerned, and they explain why. Maybe we should listen to those concerns and understand the science behind them instead of believing blogs that deliberately hide the evidence and make up fabricated claims. So please fact-check anything in this video that you're sceptical about. Unlike the bloggers, I cite all my sources in the video description, so it's easy for you to check. To the conspiracy theorists out there, if you have to misquote me to find a mistake, or if you can't do any better than criticise my voice, my attitude, or my personality, thanks. I'll take that as a sign that you fact-check my video and can't find a single error. But if you do find a mistake, then of course I'll be happy to issue a correction, as I always do. I wonder if we'll see the bloggers do the same thing. Unlike these blogs, my channel isn't monetized and I don't ask for donations. So I've suggested that if you want to give money to support this channel, please give it to a worthy charity which is detailed at the top of the video description. And just to set the record straight for a few people who made assumptions about this charity and didn't bother to check their facts before posting, 
ironic given the theme of this video, this is not a reforestation project and it hasn't been imposed on local people. It was instigated at their request. The charity has successfully stopped most of the illegal logging in a national park in Borneo by offering free community medical health care in return for a commitment not to cut down trees. Since the main reason people were logging in the national park was to get money when family members were sick. Payment to the hospital is made in the form of saplings, which are planted in open spaces of the forest that had previously been logged. Camera traps show that wildlife is now returning to these areas. And money from carbon credits for this reforestation pays the salaries of doctors and nurses. The people get proper health care, and the forest is being conserved and even restored. So reforestation is only one element of this model, which, thanks to your donations, is now being trialled in Madagascar and Brazil. I'm not connected to the charity. I just did a story on the project several years ago and was hugely impressed. So when people started asking if they could donate to my channel, I told them to donate here instead. And thanks to all of those who did.